Okay, so this is ProRadar Builder 2. And one of the major changes to it is the removal of the dedicated editor windows for the UI target, tra UI target tracker and for the radar builders. So now to create your tracking system, your minimaps, your radars, whatever it is, you go up to tools and you select uh, Pro Radar Builder. Or if you're using 2D Radar Builder or 3D Radar Builder, you'll see 2D Radar Builder or 3D Radar Builder respectively. And you just go over to your right side and you select the type of system that you want to create. I'm going to create one of each just to uh, show you the inspector. And that's where all the uh, UI has been moved to. So I'm going to select the standard 2D system first. And we have in the inspector here, uh, three sections design, rotation targets, and blips, with the added option of adding a UI target tracker. And I'll add that a little bit later on, or um, maybe not. I'll just show you an example scene somewhere else. So let's open up the designs area. Under the designs area, we, of course, have our camera settings, our option for a minimap, if we're going to be using a minimap, our scale, uh, rotation, and position. Or you can just call this transform. Um, and then we have our rotation targets, which I've changed to uh, be easier to read. So if we add a rotation target, you see now the rot rotation target uh, flows downward and now says rotate this object, give it an object, uh, proportional or inverse to this object or object with tag, instance blip, and you choose with a percentage damping off. Usually don't use this, it's usually not necessary and I might remove it. And another option is to use the object's Y rotation. So you'll mostly just be using this little bit right here, rotate this object or instance blipped proportional or inverse to this object. And at the bottom of the rotation target, you can add another rotation target. You can enable and disable rotation targets and you can move a rotation target up above the other or, um, or below so that this rotation target uh, function gets executed before um, the one below it. And that's it for that. The rotation target functions are just the same. The interface has just been changed to be uh, a bit more easy, easy to understand. And then you can hide this section by clicking the rotation targets uh, button here to hide it. The functions will still work if only hidden the area. Now under our blips section, that has also been changed so that when you uh, open up the blips area, you have your default blip here, which is always going to represent whatever object you've chosen to be the center of your minimap, radar, or re environment re-simulation. It's the object around which all the positions of every other tracked object would be referenced. So you can, underneath that, you can add, add a blip to add a, another blip. And you can click that little button underneath the newly added blip to add another one. You can add more and more and more, as many blips as you want. And you can hit that little power button on the right side, which we've, which I've, which I've kept there to enable your blips. And if you open up the blip fold out, you still have your options of using a sprite blip, prefab blip. You still have your additional options, your optimization settings and your rotation and scale settings. All those functions have remained the same. The only change is to the user interface. Now, another big change to the interface for the uh, blips is that uh, the blip creation area here, it's a bit more readable now. So you can see it says create blip as a sprite or as mesh or as prefab. If you select mesh, it's gonna tell you that it doesn't support mesh blips because this is a 2D radar and you're better off just using a prefab instead of a uh, mesh because then you can have a mesh prefab. Um, so it says create blip as a sprite mesh or prefab. 
from game object tagged and then you select a tag which you can add when you select whatever game object you want to track like for example i create a new game object and i give it the tag uh, life and i want my 2d radar to show blips of any life orb or objects whatever is in the scene i just select life so it's going to be create blip as sprite from game object tagged life and place on layer radar ui so what this means is that the blip is going to be spawned on this layer and for 2d radars as you already know and if you don't know i'll explain again our 2d systems here if i were to go ahead and run this scene i'm just going to run it nothing is going to break if i just go ahead and run this scene right now you see we have rendering uh, of two well same radar twice and of course we do have our our, uh, our our center object blip rendered in scene that's because that's enabled here we can disable it um, but i'll just leave it enabled for now um, for our sprite here what i'm going to do is actually sorry i should fix handle the uh, rendering issue first but what i'm going to do about the rendering is we only want our render camera which is a camera that's created whenever you create a 2d radar or a 3d radar not a standard not a unity ui 2d system only the standard 2d and standard 3d systems will generate a render camera for you now the render camera is purpose is to only render your minimap your radar your environment re-simulation um, and your main camera should not be rendering it or maybe you want it to render it depends on whatever you, you choose to do but for me in this instance i only want my render camera to be rendering this uh, radar so i'm going to select the render camera i'm going to go to my culling masks i'm going to select radar ui and deselect default i'm going to go to my main camera and deselect radar ui go to my 2d radar uh, put it on the radar ui layer click change children i want to go to my player here i want to add it to my radar ui uh, sprite um, and then i want to yes everything's done so if i were to go ahead and run this scene we should see two blips depending on my scene scale value we should see the radar here and two blips so there we go now if i were to grab this and move it you can see that we're now tracking it let's orient this thing correctly let's move it and track it so there we go and let's go back to this to the radar so as you saw there we do have a center blip however we did not uh, set any tags for that center blip to represent it's not representing any particular game object in the scene and that's because if we go to the radar here and scroll down to our uh, our initial default blip it says player which is a tag however we do not have a game object in the scene with the tag player so how this system works is that if you have a game object in your scene that's rep that's going to be at the center of your radar which is typically your player and depending on the type of game you have if you destroy your player game object uh, the system falls back to using the radar itself as the well it falls back to using the the camera itself as the center object reference because that's the point of view of your character if you do not have the camera it's going to fall back again to using the radar itself as the center object while a new camera or a player spawns okay so i can fold this up i'm not going to do much designing on it there are example scenes with various radar designs various minimap designs which you can check i'm showing you what the major changes are to this interface so let's go ahead and remove some of these blips so we can just hit the minus button here to remove the blips we can add blips we can copy uh, blips data let's see we can copy this blips data 
and we can paste it over here to another blip to give it the same information and uh, simply just change a tag if you want to have uh, blips with the same information but different sprite values and tracking different objects we can do that by using the copy and paste uh, general blip settings we moved the track y position function that was in the previous version of the uh, radar builders to a new function which uh, is displayed here in a button form that says use x z using x z position if we toggle that it says using x y position so if you are uh, looking at your game from top down you're going to be using the x z position by default however if you're in a like a side scroller game and you have a uh, your your minimap there you want to be using the x y position you want to be moving across the x axis and uh, tracking uh, mo movement in the y axis and that's going to be uh, the general blip settings for all blips so all blips will be uh, using the x uh, y position here and xz position here i think that's the major change here in the 3d radar it's basically just the same thing the interface has been updated to look the very same and i can just quickly show you that if i go to my tools and i go here standard 3d system um, it's the very same thing so we see we have our default blip here and we can add another blip and as many as we want the difference here is our mesh blip support or well, personally i do not use the mesh blips uh often i'll simply just use a prefab blip because the prefabs really allow for me to do far more than just uh uh simple mesh it just depends on what you want to do okay so that's it for that let's look at a ui target tracker and to do that i'm going to go to a example scene here this space simulator scene I have this I'm going to turn this off save it all right so I put together this scene uh, about a few days um, so this is an updated uh, version of that deep space scene that's in the previous example projects so what we have here is a standard 3d system very basic with uh, height trackers base trackers uh sprite blips we have a mesh blip over here or is that a prefab blip doesn't uh, could be either one of them doesn't really matter it's just there for a visual effect and we have our target trackers the target trackers work the exact same as it did before and the reason we're seeing the target tracker through the ship is because we do not have a collider on this if there was a collider then we would not be uh, seeing them through it um so let's select this uh radar if i can find it where did i put it i put it on 3d radar here all right so i scroll down hide my rotation targets there let's scroll down to our ui target tracker whenever you add a ui target tracker you basically do not need to uh uh make any other change for the system to work as soon as you add the target tracker all of your your blips are going to be populated here they'll be all given a default sprite and you just need to turn switch them on and run your scene and you'll have your target trackers now to add your off-screen indicators it's the exact same as before the interfaces for the ui target tracker has simply just been moved over to work in the inspector here so it's the exact same as before. So for your off-screen sprites, it's in a fold out here. You choose a sprite, you choose a color, you choose a padding from the side, from the uh, edge of your, your screen. You set your value, set your scale of your off-screen indicators. You set the same, uh, you set scale values, uh, sprite and color and material for your on-screen target trackers. And you're good to go. And that's it now hold on there's one more thing to show here i forgot um let me just select this one 
I don't know if I in included this in the previous project. I don't think so. But I'm give putting this example project, this uh, example system in here. So instead of using a 3D system, you could use a uh, 3D system in a 2D uh, uh, radar style. So this is the most accurate way to use a quote unquote 2D system in a space simulator. So what you need to be able to track uh, movement on the X, Y, and Z axis. And the best way to do that is to force a 3D environment into a 2D space. So it's what I did here. So you get an, a nice accurate position of where objects are in the world. It's all just red and blue dots right now, so it's not easy to know what is what. But that's just a very basic example. Well, I had to do a quick restart of the scene. I thought that I had... I had to do a quick restart of the scene. I thought that I'd uh, messed something up with this system here. Well, it's fine. So I, what I think is happening here is I set my always show option to true. I've turned on my always show option for the blips. So, um, so, so always show is on there and let's turn it off for the enemy also. All right, so there we go. So now we're just here floating in space and we want to find uh, find objects. So let's fly towards this one. Friendlies. I, I don't think I'm tracking that on this radar, am I? Oh yeah, I am. So here it is. So let's find it. And there we go. Lined up with it. Zip, perfect. All right. Yeah, that's it for this. Close that. So all of this is included. The scene's included. All the scripts and everything's included. I removed the other two. The other space uh, example scenes, I removed those. Uh, those are like, uh, unnecessary. So it's just this space scene. There's still a bunch of other scenes. If I go ahead and see how many scenes I have here. So you, you get all these scenes uh, to play around with and explore and check the settings off. I'd recommend trying out this one and what's the other one called? F-O-R. Let's know it's not this one. Scenes. I don't remember the name of the scene. So I have a 2.5D scene for a static static minimap, a 2.5D scene of a uh, real-time minimap, a 2D, 3D, this one 2D and 3D static minimaps. We have a real-time minimap. We have first-person 3D. I think we have the first-person 2D example. So there are various examples for you to uh, explore. And check the settings off. Oh, here we go. The uh, I think this is the very first environment resimulation test project I, I, I did. So in this one, we have uh, a resimulation of a little a, a planet with some asteroids spinning around it. And as I'd mentioned earlier, for persons who have been using these systems for a couple of years now, you know that. Uh, the center object is the reference point for which all other tracked objects are, are referenced. So the planet there is tracking a game object that's somewhere in the world with asteroids around it. And I am re-simulating that in a local space here. And in this, this radar that I have in front of me is basically a little stress test to show uh, what can be simulated. So instead of having a uh, mesh blip or a sprite blip, I've added prefab blips, but the prefab blips are entire radar systems themselves that are 
actively tracking other objects in the scene. So you can have this many and more systems in your scene at once and still pretty quick. Um, and messing around with your with your uh, rotation targets is uh, something you should really do because for this for this uh, system here we can lock it in place to prevent it from swinging about like this so we have a nice stable first person uh, system so if i go ahead and select my i don't know which one it is it's this one if i go to my rotation targets here and i enable this now we can lock this in place and now we have our system locked in and tracking correctly as it should. And all we did was tell it that we want to grab this radar here and we want to rotate it proportionally to the render camera. So the camera that's so this render camera that's rendering uh, this particular system here, we're simply just telling uh, this to rotate along with it. That's basically just it. I should have a 3D screen space example here. I think it's this one, the first person 3D. Uh, one that I liked a lot was this first person 3D. So what I did here, I do have a uh, render camera for this one because I want to render this one in, I think this one's, this one's definitely in, let's see here. Uh, yeah, this one's in screen space. It's in screen space and it's set to be inside of our player's helmet, though it's not actually as you can see in the scene. Uh, where is it? Uh, here. As you can see in the scene, it's actually down here. But we're using the render camera to render it from the perspective of our player here. So if we go ahead and look at that, we look at the camera here, we see the camera moving. So we're rendering using the render camera to render our our uh, our 3D 3D uh, minimap here in a first person perspective. So you move around, you get all of your tracking. I think that's really cool, and you can make this look as cool as you want. So I, I do encourage you to go ahead and, and look through the example scenes. It's quite easy to set up. Again, you don't actually need to uh, write any code for anything here. All of this was done without, all the systems were made without having to write code for them. You just go to a, you just tool, create something, 3D radar, game object, create empty, give it a tag, enemy i'm going to just move it way out here i'm going to go here go to my blips I'm not going to turn that on turn this one on actually just fold it out i want to create an enemy blip and it's going to be a sprite and i just click tracking lines active tracking lines there materials there click base tracker fold those out base trackers there Though the tracking line might be a little big, it's still going to uh, work and render as it should. Though it may be a little bit big, it's fine here. Now the camera's blocking it, but there you go. If I grab it, let's turn off this render camera, I'm not using it. If I grab the game object and I move it up in the Y axis, we can see we have our blip there with our tracking line and base tracker you can of course go to your system and modify your the scale of your base tracker the scale of your tracking line so it's just plug and play you just uh, create a system tell it what to track and just design it it's all up to you all of the uh all of the the, the, the settings are this exact same as they were before the major change is your interface. 
the interface is now in the inspector and it's easier to read now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.